If you have a laser cutter or engraver, there is one accessory that you have to get. This is the RA2 Pro from Xtool. It is the world's first four-in-one rotary attachment that allows you to engrave all sorts of irregular shaped cylinders, tumblers, mugs, and almost anything that is round. I am going to show you just how easy this is to use and run you through some amazing projects that you can try for fun or that you can use and make a profit with. The first thing we are going to do is put the extender feet on the Xtool D1 laser so it will be high enough to accommodate the RA2 attachment. The next step is to attach the connector wire from the RA2 to the motherboard of the laser. As we drop the RA2 down in the engraving area, you need to make sure that you place this with the base to the right of the laser module. Not like this, but like this. Always make sure the base is to the right. The first project we are going to engrave are some tumblers with different designs. For this, we will be using the rotary roller. As I put the tumbler on the rotary roller, you will notice it isn't level because of its irregular shape. Well, Xtool has already thought of this and made a separate leveling tool that will rotate with the rollers. We are going to move the leveling tool right beside the base of the RA2 and lay the end of the tumbler on the wheel of the leveling tools. Now the way this works is by twisting this adjustment knob and as I twist it to the right, this little part goes up and as I twist it to the left, it goes down. So we are going to twist the adjustment knob until the bubble in the level is straight on the tumbler. We are ready to engrave now. Make sure the mouth of the tumbler is facing to the right of the laser module. We are going to turn on the laser and set the focus by letting the focus lever down and locking the module in place. If you need more insight on focusing the laser module, click this video up here. Now we are going to import some images into the LaserBox software and engrave. There's other software out there, but LaserBox is simple to use and gets fantastic results. When you import the image into LaserBox, most of the images you will want to engrave will need to be rotated 90 degrees with the top of the image facing to the right. I'm going to make a box here. Imagine this is a tumbler and the top of the tumbler, which is the mouth, is to the right. And I'm going to put the logo over it and this is what it is going to look like. I'm showing you this so you can get a visual. If you want to get the right size, just measure the tumbler, which I have already done. So just play around until you get this right. But this is the size that I am wanting. My settings are coated metal at 100% power and 70% speed. When you hit start, you will be taken to the screen. I am going to position the laser relative to our image by dragging the blue dot to the middle of the image and click on the option cylinder working. You have to check this on if you are using the RA2 attachment. When we hit the frame button, the laser crosshairs is going to show you the outline where the image will be engraved. This is looking great, so we are going to start. And again, remember I have everything lined up perfect and the crosshairs right in the middle of the tumbler. Now instead of showing you each tumbler step by step, we are going to speed through these so we can use the chuck rotary. And the most important tip I have for you guys is to go to Walmart and buy a cheap $7 tumbler to practice with. After your first engraving, I promise you will have more confidence to tackle more and more. To clean the tumblers, you will want to use a magic eraser and water. These tumblers turned out great and I will send these out this week. Next, we are going to attach the chuck rotary. This process includes removing the roller rotaries and attaching the chuck rotary to the base plate as well as the drive bell. This process is simple and I suggest you follow the written instructions if you need more detail. It only takes a few minutes to set up. After I insert the mug, I am going to tighten down the jaws with the chuck rotary key. 98% of the time, you will want to coat any type of ceramic you are marking with paint because it allows for the surface of the ceramic to be marked. Now, I'm going to see how this works without it just for a test. Okay, this definitely needs some paint because the image is too light and I also forgot to invert my image. I'm showing you guys my mistake and this result so you can learn from it. 
I'm also going to reverse the chuck rotary on the base plate so I can have more room on the next cup. I actually recommend doing this for any cups with a handle. At this point in the video, I just realized I deleted all of my footage showing you guys how to paint the ceramic cups. So here's basically what I did. I used the Rust-Oleum brand paint and primer, flat black, and the satin smoky beige. And what you wanna do, paint the cups, let them dry, and then you can laser them. Now for this test, I painted one side black and the other side the smoky beige. And I will tell you, the satin smoky beige worked the best. The results I got were pretty good here. Please listen to this part. Whenever you are using the jaw chuck or the ring rotary, Laserbox is going to ask for the diameter of the object that you are engraving. And I am going to show you the fastest, easy way to do this. So for the mugs that we are using, we need to measure the diameter. So for this, I recommend a digital caliper. This is much easier than the cloth tape measures. So I'm going to turn this on and look at this, cinch it down, and there we go, 81.4. So when we go into laser box, I am going to put 81.4 when I have the jaw chuck option selected. You're probably noticing my images coming out inverted or upside down. At this point, I realized that there was a glitch inside of Laserbox. The fix is I updated Laserbox and I updated the firmware on my Xtool D1 Pro and it started working great. These turned out pretty good despite my mistakes and the glitch that I found. And there is something interesting I want to point out to you guys. When I used the black paint, the image etched in white, but when I used the white smoky beige paint, the image etched in black. And this is pretty deep. If I scratch it with my thumbnail, you can hear it. So it's in there pretty deep. So I will most definitely be using the smoky beige paint on the rest of the ceramic mugs. To use the ring rotary, all you have to do is insert the three metal rods and you are good to go. Now I am using a cheap rubber ring and a cheap gold plated pewter ring for the test. You use this by slipping the ring over the three metal rods and loosening the chuck. As you loosen the chuck, the metal rods start getting larger and that will friction fit the ring in place. I am removing the ember colored safety glass from the laser module to have more room. And just like with the mugs, measure the diameter of the ring and plug that number into laser box. The rubber turned out pretty decent, but I rushed it and got the lettering off sides. Now for this pewter ring, I used a Sharpie marker and then eventually some paint so the laser would mark. Despite my best efforts, it didn't take. But that's all right, I just got the 1064 infrared laser module in the mail yesterday and this is made for marking metal and for plastic. So we are going to retry this on the ring and also do another ring. The infrared laser module works much better on jewelry. Now this is my first time using this so I was shooting in the dark without any type of research whatsoever and these turned out pretty decent. I would have probably ran these at two passes and they would have gotten much darker but I'm pretty pleased with this. And the ring rotary is working great. Let's engrave a baseball now. For this part, I am going to use part of the sphere rotary attachment and slide it onto the base of the RA2. This will help hold the baseball in place. I ran this at two passes and it came out fantastic. I would love to get some blank baseballs and start making them for our local school teams. I think it would be a huge hit. 
There are so many things that you can do with the RA2 Pro attachment, and we did not even scratch the surface of it really in this video. Now, if you plan on buying a laser or you already have one, well, picking up the RA2 Pro is a no-brainer. And one of the best things that I like about it is that if you have another brand of laser, well, it still works if your laser is compatible. So if you already have a laser, check it out. One of the reasons that I like and recommend Extol is because of their innovation and the quality of products that you get, and the RA2 Pro is no exception. This is made with all metal components and it is solid. And I know it will last a long time, especially doing production work. Let me know in the comments below what you would use your RA2 Pro for. I absolutely love mine and I have been staying so busy using it. So I will talk to you guys next time. All the links for everything you've seen here will be below. You guys take care.